Hello and welcome to today's PacBio Bioinformatics Lunch and Learn webinar. We understand that this is a challenging time in light of the coronavirus pandemic and appreciate that you are spending this time with us. Be assured that we are recording this webinar and will make both the slides and the recording available to registrants. Today we'll be talking about Hi-Fi Assembly. My name is Kay Weber and I'm a Bioinformatics Field Application Scientist in North America's East Territory. During today's webinar, we will discuss how to generate highly accurate long reads or hi-fi reads, discuss hi-fi assembly performance, and compare it to traditional continuous long read assembly performance, and step-by-step -step walk you through how to complete a hi-fi assembly using Falcon. We'll also touch on new hi-fi assemblers that are available or soon to be released and finish with some final thoughts and the topic for the next webinar. So what are highly accurate long reads and how do you generate them? Most of you should be familiar with our single molecule real-time or smart sequencing technology. This unique technology produces long reads in the tens to hundreds of kilobases in length and has a high consensus accuracy, free of systematic errors, and which can sequence evenly across a variety of sequence contexts without GC content or sequence complexity bias. This enables you to penetrate hard to sequence regions in the human genome or assemble unculturable microorganisms or to span repetitive regions in genomes of any taxa. Over the last 10 years, PacBio has made incredible progress in increasing our throughput, with the latest development being the release of a new sequencing instrument in 2019, the SQL2 system, which can produce eight to 10 times the data of our previous system. One of the most powerful benefits of this new system is the ability to change the paradigm of long read sequencing. So in the old paradigm, you would have to choose between sequence length or base accuracy. NGS technologies provided high base accuracy, but with short read length, whereas long read sequencing technologies provided long read length, but lower base accuracy. With this new system, we've worked to efficiently produce a new data type called the high fidelity or high fi read. And this is a little bit shorter than our continuous long reads, but has the high accuracy of NGS reads. So what are hi-fi reads exactly? A hi-fi read is a consensus sequence of all the sequence passes of a template, what we call subreads. Shown here is a linear piece of DNA where we've ligated our hairpin adapters to which the DNA polymerase can bind. As the polymerase sequences, it produces this circular DNA smart bell where the polymerase enters rolling circle mode. Here is the first pass or first subread, which has an average accuracy of 85 to 90%. As the polymerase continues to sequence, it produces another pass with different errors as sequencing error in smart sequencing is random. So the consensus of these two subreads would be approximately 95%. And we call this process circular consensus sequencing or CCS. If we add another pass, so now we're at three subreads or three passes, the consensus accuracy increases to an average of 98%. Now we'll jump ahead to 10 passes. And at this point, the consensus accuracy is 99.9% .9 or QV30, which is an average of one error per one KB. So as we've worked to improve the average length of our polymerase reads, we've increased the number of subreads we can produce and the size of the inserts, which we can analyze with this process. Using the 2.0 chemistry release, which came out in fall of last year, we've increased our polymerase read links an additional 25 to 50%, leading us to increase our hi-fi yield by 40%. So that now we support a hi-fi insert size of 25 KB and still meet that minimum of 99% consensus accuracy or QV20. If we take a look at the sequencing performance of a SQL2 2.0 chemistry hi-fi run, in this case, we're looking at a 15 KB size selected human library run for 30 hours on a SQL2 system with 2.0 chemistry. You can see that our longest polymerase read lengths are in excess of 300 KB in length with half the data in reads of 185 KB or longer. And the bulk of the data is from these really long reads. We've generated a total of 450 gigabases of data from approximately 5 million reads. Now, once we complete CCS to produce the hi-fi reads, 
we have a total of 27.4 gigabases of data of 20 K, uh, Q20 or better error correction. And this is from 2.1 million hi-fi reads. And the mean accuracy for these reads is 99.96% or QV34. If you want to picture what QV34 looks like, here's an example of an approximately 20 KB hi-fi read with a predicted QV of 33. You can see that we have eight errors that we've noted with these red tick marks. So if you calculate it out, that works out to 99.96% accurate or QV34, which aligns with our predicted QV of 33. So you can see how powerful it is to be able to have this really, really long read that is so highly accurate. With the increased th throughput of the 8M smart cells of the SQL2 system, there are many applications where you only require one or two smart cells per sample. These include assembly, which we'll be talking about today, variant detection, including structural variant detection, full length RNA sequencing, also called ISOSeq for isoform sequencing, targeted sequencing, and the characterization of complex populations or metagenomics. So if you'd like to learn more about some of these other applications, please visit our website at pacb.com slash one smart cell. But today we're gonna to be focused on Hi-Fi assembly. So how does Hi-Fi assembly work and how does it compare to traditional continuous long read assembly? Many of you will be familiar with the de novo assembly workflow for continuous long read data, and so I've outlined it here um, with the approach used by assemblers like Falcon and Canoe. So the CLR assembly process begins with a computationally intensive round of error correction, which we call pre-assembly. This step involves an all-by-all -all alignment of the CLR and consumes most of the, continue, uh, of the compute time for the assembly process. After that, you do the overlapping and assembly graph generation, and then your read alignment and consensus polishing so that you get your final set of polished contigs. With Hi-Fi assembly, instead of doing that pre-assembly step, we're gonna do our error correction with the CCS process. And then we can feed those Hi-Fi reads into the assembly beginning with the overlapping step. So we're avoiding that all by all alignment process and instead, instead doing alignment and consensus per ZMW. Because we're eliminating this really computationally intensive step, we're saving a lot of compute time, which really is a huge savings. And if you want to picture just how much of a savings it is, we have a couple of examples. So we're going to start with this example using a hexaploid wheat. So the CLR assembly was published in 2017 and used 32-fold coverage of long read data. Um, so basically, it's, it's near the minimum of what we typically recommend for using Falcon for a long read assembly. Um, and we're comparing it to a simulated data set where we have 20-fold coverage of hi-fi reads that were simulated based on a SQL 2 version 2.0 error profile. And you can see that the Hi-Fi error correction took one-fifth of the time compared to the CLR error correction in pre-assembly and used only 2.6% of the disk space compared with CLR assembly. So 0.9 terabytes versus 34 terabytes for the long read assembly. Since disk usage scales with genome size and coverage and traditional CLR assemblies already use a massive amount of disk space, it's really powerful for us to be able to reduce that so substantially by doing this Hi-Fi assembly process. Moving to another example, here we're looking at a human genome assembly. Um, you can see that we're working with um, two data sets here. One is a 20-fold um, 20 fold coverage Hi-Fi data set, and the other is a 50-fold CLR data set. If you consider how much data is produced by each 8M smart cell, this 20-fold coverage data set is approximately two smart cells worth, and this um, long read data set with 50-fold coverage is approximately three 8M smart cells worth. And so if you think about the process, the CLR assembly protocol begins with feeding these 323 gigabytes of data in the subreads BAM into the Falcon assembler to begin pre-assembly. That assembly took 62 hours of wall time, 
for read correction and context assembly and 13,000 CPU hours using a total of 7.2 terabytes of data. If we contrast that with the CCS HiFi approach, we completed CCS, so we're already working with only 48 gigabytes of data in this gunzipped FastQ HiFi data file. It goes straight into overlapping and polishing, and it uses half the wall hours, half the CPU hours, and 16 times less disk space. So overall, we can conclude that HiFi is computationally less expensive, faster, and using less disk space. In addition to the computational savings during assembly with HiFi data, single molecule consensus with CCS is more accurate than multi molecule consensus used in pre assembly of CLR data. So here's an example from an inbred strain of rice. And in this IGV screenshot, we're showing a region of the rice genome that has two repeats, shown in these two blue bars. Then in this top track, we're showing the pre assembled reads from a CLR data set. And in this track, we're showing the HiFi fi reads from another data set. And you can see that there are errors in these regions of repeats due to erroneous mapping of the CLR reads that originate from other copies of these repeats in the rest of the genome. In contrast, in the HiFi reads, because the error correction is within molecule, there are very few errors because they're not affected by any other regions anywhere else in the genome. So you're getting a higher accuracy set of reads in the HiFi reads compared to the pre-assembled reads. Now, if we move into a couple examples in human, um, we'll start with a preprint from Evan Eichler's lab at the University of Washington, shown over here on the left. And in this paper, they directly compared a CLR and a HiFi data set for a homozygous human cell line, CHM13. They had 77 fold coverage of CLR data and 24 fold coverage of HiFi data. And they found their assemblies were of similar contiguity so with a contig N50 of 29 megabases in both data sets. They estimated their base QV by aligning back sequences from the CHM13 sample to their assemblies and found that the HiFi assembly had higher base QV, QV45, compared with QV40.7 for the CLR data. We've also run some examples um, internally um, working in humans. So we have um, two diploid human samples, HG002, which was discussed extensively in Aaron Wenger's paper um, released in Nature Biotechnology of last year, um, plus HG005, which is a Han Chinese individual. So we're showing the base QVs for these assemblies for the CLR of the HG002 versus the HI5 for HG002 and HG005 right here. And you can see that both the HiFi assemblies have higher base QVs than the CLR assembly. And in fact, we have many windows that perfectly match the reference and have QV51, which is the maximum. And another thing I want you to notice just as we proceed is that we're typically working with lower coverage in the HiFi data sets. We found that you don't actually need as high coverage to do HiFi assembly as you do CLR assembly. So that will be a running theme as we run through the rest of our examples. So moving beyond humans, we're going to talk about rice and also Drosophila melanogaster or fly. So for rice, we were comparing a 30 KB library of CLR data to two HiFi libraries size selected at 11 KB and 14 KB respectively that we analyzed separately. As, as we saw in human, the base QV is higher for the HiFi assemblies relative to the CLR assembly. For the Drosophila example, we were doing a collaboration with Drs. Emerson and Chakraborty at UC Irvine. And in that case, we were sequencing offspring of an F1 cross between the ISO1 or reference strain and the A4 strain. So we did both CLR and HiFi assemblies. And then because we were comparing against the ISO1 reference strain, we did a trio binned approach. So we basically sorted our long reads by unique k-mers into maternal and paternal haplotypes and assembled them separately. And so then we could take just the ISO1 haplotype and compare it against its reference in Flybase. So the median QV was pretty similar between the CLR and HiFi assemblies, but we saw an increase in the number of high QV windows in the HiFi assembly. 
We've also shown just for comparison, the base QV of fly, fly base reference against itself. And another assembly that was produced a couple years ago by Solaris et al, um, which is of lower base quality and uses a different long rate sequencing technology. So in addition to being computationally less expensive, we can see that using HiFi assembly produces higher base quality um, due to the single molecule error correction. So the next thing we really want to take a good look at was contiguity. Um, as we know, our, our customers assemble a huge diversity of organisms. So it was really important to determine whether HiFi assembly has any negative impact on contiguity. We know that we're working with a somewhat shorter insert length for HiFi libraries. So we're looking at 15 to 25 KB insert lengths compared to the 35 to 50 KB and above insert lengths that you might be able to generate on a CLR library. However, as we started working through our examples, we saw that there actually isn't any negative impact on contiguity doing the HiFi approach. So we saw that in both the human examples from earlier, and here I'm showing it for a Drosophila example, and also for the Pacific bluefin tuna. So you can see that we're actually getting higher contig N50s in the HiFi assemblies compared to the CLR assemblies. And some of these have really high coverage. Like if you look at the Pacific bluefin tuna, that's 200 fold CLR coverage with double the insert size. And we're still producing much higher contiguity from a 55 fold HiFi library. So this looks really, really good. And we we're very happy with this. However, when we started looking at our rice assemblies, we saw that the CLR assemblies were more contiguous than the HiFi libraries in that first pass approach. So in this case, we're showing that for a 60-fold CLR library um, at 30 KB insert size, we're generating a contig N50 of 11.2 megabases. And for two, the two examples we were talking about earlier in the base QV discussion um, of 11 KB and 14 KB insert sizes with 30-fold and 39-fold coverage respectively, we're getting much lower contig N50 of 1.5 megabases and 3.3 megabases. So, we did see some improvement in contig N50 um, in the 14 KB library, but it's still much lower than what we saw in the CLR library. And we want to understand why that was happening. So the first thing we considered is, is it something with our assembly approach? So we took a look at the Falcon code and realized that we could make some improvements that would improve assembly. So what we ended up doing was modifying the code involving hi-fi read overlapping and filtering prior to graph construction and contig generation. So we added the ability to ignore indel differences in hi-fi read overlaps and increase the stringency of overlaps to take advantage of the higher accuracy of the hi-fi reads. Indel errors are the predominant error type in smart sequencing. And you can see that from this table reproduced from the Wenger et al paper from last year, um, even after error correction. So, if you take a look at these um, histograms here of the percent identity in the rice example for um, all differences, indels versus mismatches, you can see that once we ignore indel differences, we can dramatically increase the stringency of hi-fi overlap identity in order to remove repeat induced overlaps. So the changes we made here were increasing that stringency and also ignoring indels. And just by making those two changes, we were able to boost our contig N50 using the same data sets. So this one went up from 1.5 megabases to 6.2 megabases, and the 14 KB went up from 3.3 megabases to 6.9 megabases. And you can see the impact on cumulative assembly length in this graph down here. So this is a good improvement, but it's still not reaching comparative contiguity to the CLR assembly. So the next thing that we considered was the repeat structure in rice. So the dominant repeat type in rice are gypsy-like long terminal repeat retrotransposons. These are approximately 10 to 13 KB in length with a mean length of 11.7 KB. So this really explains why the 14 KB hi-fi library performed better. However, if we increase our library size a little bit more, we have a better chance of being able to anchor repeats with unique sequence on either side. And since we were coming out with our 2.0 chemistry, it just made sense to increase our library sizes and see what impact that would have on assembly contiguity for these hi-fi assemblies. 
So working with the version two chemistry, we increased our library sizes to 17 KB and 24 KB. And we finally saw that boost in contiguity that we were looking for. So now we're seeing contig N50s in excess of what we saw for the CLR library. And in some cases, we're still working with lower coverage data. In fact, for the 24 KB library, we were actually able to assemble three chromosomes into single contigs, which is amazing. So basically to sum up, the things that we tried were making some small adjustments to the Falcon code and increasing our insert sizes using the 2.0 chemistry to enable that. And by putting those two together, we were able to get really exceptional performance in these hi-fi assemblies. So the moral of the story is that you can get as contiguous or even more contiguous assemblies from hi-fi assembly as long as your insert sizes are large enough. So I'd really recommend using the latest chemistry. Okay, so now if I've convinced you of the value of doing a hi-fi assembly with your organism, how do you do it? So we're gonna start by looking at the Falcon assembler because it's a really strong and well-validated assembler and has been used for all the examples we've talked about so far. So to make use of the new code, I'd really recommend using the PB assembly package that we've made available on Bioconda. This um, Bioconda is basically a way we make a number of different PacBio tools available in addition to our SmartLink and Smart Tools installation. Um, and it's pretty easy to set up. You basically just install Anaconda or Miniconda, create a local environment for your packages. In this case, I've created it in the environments folder and I've called it HiFi De Novo Assembly. And then basically just install the required package of PB Assembly into this environment and then made sure everything was up to date. Then I go through and activate my environment so the tools are ready to use. In terms of configuring Falcon, Falcon or in the PB assembly package takes only a config file, the FC run config as its only input parameter. So all input files and settings are all specified in this one file. We've made available in the PB assembly GitHub repo a folder called slash configs, which has a couple of different example configs for running PB assembly. We'd recommend running FC run HiFi for most genomes. However, we've also uploaded um, the HiFi Rice and HiFi Human examples, um, but those are a little bit older, and we'd say just use this one in most cases. It's also really interesting that we've tested running HiFi assembly doing Falcon Unzip, which was a process where you would go through and phase your assemblies after you'd completed them. And we've actually found that on these HiFi runs, you really don't need to do that because doing a HiFi assembly, you'll typically end up with the different haplotypes assembling separately. So it alleviates the need to do the unzip step, which is really computationally expensive. So right now we're not recommending that people perform Falcon unzip anymore, just do a normal HiFi assembly and you should get phased outputs. So the next thing I wanna talk about are the key parameters of the Falcon config that are different for HiFi assembly versus CLR assembly. There are a lot of different parameters in the Falcon config. And so I provided a link here that you can access once you get these slides that goes through all the different parameters in the file, but we're gonna focus on the ones that are different. So the first thing is just specifying that the input type is P reads. So you're telling the program that you wanna use the HiFi or CCS FASTA file in place of the pre-assemble reads coming out of a CLR assembly or a CLR pre-assembly. Because basically we're not gonna perform pre-assembly at all. We're going to have the HiFi reads take the place of those pre-assembled CLR reads. The next thing you wanna change is increasing that stringency. So you're gonna do that for the D-aligner options during overlapping. So overlap D-aligner option and you're increasing that E value up to 99%. Similarly, when you're filtering your overlaps, we can set our minimum identity to 99.9% .9 and also give this instruction to ignore indels as we talked about with the, the rice example. Another parameter to just be aware of is the length cutoff for pre-assembled reads. So um, you can modulate this parameter to set a filter on how large the HiFi reads need to be, but you just wanna make sure you're not setting it too high for the library that you've generated. So just be aware of what size HiFi library you're working with and set this value appropriately. In this case, we're using 10 KB. The next thing I just wanna mention are job configuration considerations. 
So all of our configs presume an SGE job type, but if you're working on a different system, let's say a Slurm system or PBS, LSF, Torque, or even just on a local system, you're probably gonna wanna edit the submit script in the, the FC run config. Um, we have some information available on our documentation on GitHub, so I've got some links here to, to help walk you through, but you're just gonna make a few changes there to make sure it can run on your system. Another thing to be aware of is memory requirements. So we did all of our benchmarking on a system that was up to spec for a SQL 2 instrument customer. So I've linked here the installation document for our current version of SmartLink, which has description of what the compute cluster requirements are for analysis of SQL 2 data. Um, and so if you definitely can work on a smaller cluster. That's one of the, the benefits of doing HiFi assembly. But if you do, it's important that you go through and check the parameters that are being specified and, and make sure that they match the system you're working on. So I'd recommend taking a look at the end proc, uh, the memory, and then the end jobs settings for each of the steps of assembly, just to make sure that they're appropriate for the system that you're working on. So in terms of running Falcon, it's really very straightforward. All you really have to do is export your HiFi reads. So by default, we use a Q20 cutoff and export them in FASTA format. And I just wanna make the point that it's really important not to mix your CLR and your HiFi data to try to do hybrid assembly. They really have very different error profiles and we've done a lot of work to try and optimize the performance for HiFi assembly separate from CLR assembly. So don't try to combine them together. Um, so if you just have a single FASTA file, you can use that as input. Um, if you have multiple files, then you can create a file of file names, which is just a text file that has all the paths to all the input data sets, and you put those together and then specify them in the Falcon config. So in your config, you're going to have the paths to the input data in FASTA format. Then you can just say fc run fc run hifi.config, and now you've started assembly. In terms of polishing, we recommend using a tool called Racon for polishing. So it, again, it's very straightforward. You're gonna take your CCS reads in FASTQ format, align them with a long read aligner. We recommend PBMM2 um, and then polish. So we've got an example here showing um, PBM2. We're aligning CCS data to our assembly.fasta to generate an aligned BAM. Then we use SAM tools to convert the aligned BAM to an aligned SAM and use RACON with the FASTQ data and the Align SAM and the assembly to generate a new polish assembly FASTA. If you'd like an example, we have a Snakemake example available on our website. So we've got a link right here. Now using PB assembly in comparison to something like HGAP in um, the SmartLink 8, um, you're gonna have fewer like custom reports generated. So there's a little bit of additional work you're gonna to have to do to summarize the results that you've generated using this process. What we'd recommend to get some basic stats is to go ahead and clone the PBAssembly GitHub repo, and then you can use this script called getAssemblyStats to get some basic metrics on the assemblies that you're generating. So in this case, I'm looking at the primary contigs coming out of assembly, Falcon Assembly, um, and then summarizing them. So I hope you can see that this is really very simple and because this is such a, a powerful and well-validated assembler, we do recommend trying a Falcon assembly in any data set that you're looking at. But what about other HiFi assembly tools? So they're, they're constantly coming out with new tools using this new data type and a lot of them have a lot of performance benefits and so you may want to try those as well. So there, there are too many for us to talk about all of them, but we're gonna talk about a few right now. Okay, so one of the first ones I wanna mention, even though it hasn't been released yet, is the Nighthawk tool. It's an upcoming Hi-Fi assembler that we're producing, which uses read colored Kamer de Bruin graphs and read similarity scores based on shared variants to phase as it assembles. So we've got a blog post on that assembler right here. I also wanna mention Hi-Fi ASM. Um, Hi-Fi ASM shares some source code with mini ASM, but the key difference is read overlaps in mini ASM can be inexact, whereas HiFi ASM requires nearly identical overlaps, which dramatically speeds up the overlapping step and resolves local phasing. 
So for that, I've got a link to the GitHub page. We also have a Medium article, which is an interview between one of our scientists and Hang Lee. And so I'd really recommend giving it a read because it gives a really nice um, quick explanation of how it works um, and it can be really helpful for understanding. The next one I wanna mention is High Canoe. Um, so High Canoe is based on Canoe, which was an advancement on the Solera assembler. And it uses three techniques to reduce hi-fi error rate below 1%. So it's doing an additional correction on top of hi-fi data that's being generated by CCS. So the first one is run length encoding, or RLE, which is homopolymer compression. So as the majority of hi-fi read errors occur in homopolymer regions, RLE compresses homopolymers to a single base, allowing for faster overlap and error correction. The next thing it does is remove spurious errors that occur in only one read. And then finally, it ignores mapping ambiguities arising from dinucleotide repeats. So after all this, it takes these corrected hi-fi reads that are at this point nearly perfect. And so the overlapping can be very high stringency. So we've got a link here to the preprint, which was just released yesterday. I really recommend reading it. It's a great article, um, as well as a link to a Medium blog post that we, that we put out that describes how it works. So the next one I wanna mention just briefly is Red Bean, also called WTDBG2. Um, this one wasn't designed for hi-fi assembly. It was designed for long read assembly in general, but it does have a CCS setting to support hi-fi assembly. It's really fast. Um, it was written for working with a really large assembly, um, the 30 gigabase um, oxalotl assembly, um, which is sort of a Mexican salamander. Um, and so I really recommend giving it a shot. Um, it should also perform really well. Um, and then finally, I wanted to mention Peregrine, which uses sparse hierarchical minimizers or shimmer to index reads, thereby avoiding the need to do an all by all read comparison step. So this also saves a lot of time. So a lot of these are really, really fast assemblers and can be worth running in parallel with the Falcon Hi-Fi assembly. So just to go into a little bit more detail about um, some of the assemblies we've seen coming out using these other assemblers, um, this one's using um, high, can, uh, high Canoe, and they were assembling the very difficult cannabis genome, and they assembled it to unprecedented quality. Um, so even the telomeres were assembled. Um, and the only non-default setting was to specify that they were using PacBio hi-fi reads. So I really recommend taking a look at that. And then the other one I want to briefly mention is the massive 27 gigabase California Redwood genome. Um, this was assembled by us. Um, so we, we were able to, to collect the samples and run them and assemble them all in a very, very short time frame. Um, and we assembled it on a single node of 64 cores and 512 gigabases of RAM, gigabytes of RAM under default settings. So this is really cheap to run on the cloud. So if, if you do the math, it ends up working out to about $150 to do this assembly end to end. Um, and we did incredible in terms of the Contig N50. It's so much better than some of the other assemblies that have come out looking at the California Redwood. So we have a Medium article on the assembly. The raw data and results are public. So I'd really recommend taking a look and just considering using this assembler as well. So final thoughts. Why should you try Hi-Fi Assembly? Well, I hope that I've shown you that it's a bioinformatically lightweight alternative to doing traditional CLR assemblies. You're getting the best consensus accuracy. You're getting good or even better contiguity, phased output, and less demanding sample requirements because you're working with smaller insert sizes compared to CLR libraries. And now with the SQL 2 2.0 chemistry, you can produce 25 to 30 gigabases of hi-fi data per 8M smart cell. So this is about tenfold coverage of a human genome per smart cell. And I just wanna note that in our 2020 roadmap, we're planning to further increase hi-fi yield per smart cell and also produce CCS on instrument. So you don't even have to worry about running the error correction on your cluster or cloud instance. You can just generate your hi-fi reads on instrument and move directly into your assemblies process. So just to break it down, when should you use hi-fi versus CLR for assembly? Well, for right now in microbes, so genomes less than 10 megabases in size, you're typically multiplexing these on a, on a smart cell. We'd recommend for right now using the microbial assembly application with CLR reads. 
It does a very good job, and it'll also assemble both the bacterial chromosomes as well as recover plasmids from the same sample. However, if you're working in a larger genome with abundant high molecular weight DNA, we'd recommend going forward with HiFi. Just generate a library that has a 15 KB insert size or larger, and you should have a very straightforward assembly. If you're working with large, complex, or polyploid genomes, definitely do HiFi assembly. It's got that improved performance in polyploids, and it's just going to do a lot better for you in resolving those differences because of the increased accuracy. If you're working with lower quality DNA, like let's say you can't achieve that 15 to 25 kilobase um, insert size, and you're more on the 5 to 10 KB fragment size, we'd honestly still recommend do HiFi assembly. We've done some tests and seen that even with smaller insert sizes, you get a more contiguous assembly with HiFi than you do with CLR. So we'd still recommend to do HiFi assembly in this case. What about if you're working with less input DNA? Let's say you just have a couple hundred nanograms. Well, we have a protocol that uses low input amounts to generate enough material to do HiFi sequencing. So we'd still recommend doing HiFi assembly using our low input protocol to generate the data. How about if you have very little input DNA? So 100 nanograms is way out of your range. You're looking at more like five to 10 nanograms. Well, we're actually coming out soon with an ultra low input protocol. This does involve some amplification, but it does generate enough data to be able to proceed with HiFi assembly. So you've got options through all of these different variations in experimental design to still be able to do HiFi assembly in your organism. And just to finish up, um, I wanted to point you to some examples on our DevNet. Um, so we've got a human example here, and the presentation has been peppered with links to different data sets as I've been going through. So once you receive the slides, you should be able to follow those links and be able to get access to the data to test yourself if you would like to. And again, I just want to make the point that we've, we've made a big effort to make smart sequencing approachable to a huge variety of organisms. Everything from complex populations in the soil to small insects that would produce low input amounts up to the larger complex genomes of you know, the, the animal and its food supply so that you're really characterizing an entire ecosystem with confidence. And it doesn't take that many smart cells anymore because of the increase in throughput that we've had with our technology. So again, just recommending to go to our website um, slash one smart cell to read about some of these applications. And speaking of that, um, we're planning another webinar. It should happen in one or two months. Um, and we're still considering what topics we'd like to talk about. So um, if you're interested in any of these topics, we're considering um, comprehensive variant calling, so small variant calling, indel calling, structural variant calling, using hi-fi reads, or if you're interested in isoseq, so full length RNA sequencing, perhaps even single cell sequencing or annotation um, using Squanty2. Um, or more, uh, perhaps you're even more interested in metagenomics. We can talk about how you'd analyze metagenomic samples using HiFi reads. Or even perhaps you're interested in epigenetics, so we can talk about how you do base modification detection in microbes. If you're interested in any of these topics, or if there are other topics that you're really interested in, please just send us an email. Um, I think we're sending out like a, a poll at, um, after this presentation, um, and just let us know what you really want to hear from us about. And with that, thank you so much for your time. This has been a real pleasure, um, and I'll take any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, we're taking a look at the questions right now. Um, again, if you've got questions about what you'd like to, to understand better about the HiFi assembly process, please let us know. Um, and if, if, you're, um, if you don't wanna ask questions right now, you can also send us an email after or email your bioinformatics FAS to ask them directly about HiFi assembly if you would like. Okay, so um, a question that just came in is, what if you have a microbial genome with short reads, what's the recommended protocol? Okay, so, so you're doing um, multiplex microbial sequencing and your insert size is short. 
Um, we'd recommend for right now using the microbial assembly application using um, CLR data for right now. Okay, we've got another question coming in. As the trade-off between sequencing accuracy and hi-fi length, would it be feasible to produce 50 KB hi-fi reads with three passes so you can better resolve long repeats in plants? I think this is a really interesting question. Um, and in fact, in the Redwood genome example that I showed just a few minutes ago, there were some examples of really, really long hi-fi reads in excess of the 25 KB that we're currently recommending to people. So I wouldn't necessarily say that you could produce uh, reliably like a data set that was 100% 50 KB hi-fi reads, but I think that there's definitely some work to be done in terms of increasing the, the size of the inserts that we can do for hi-fi. So I think it's something to keep an eye on um, and definitely take a look at that Redwood Genome Assembly. You know, take a look at the data and judge for yourself in terms of how well it performed. Is there any pre-configured image on AWS or Google Cloud that already has this um, set up? So not right now, but it's definitely something that we're working on. Um, so again, um, if you contact your Bioinformatics FAS, they can definitely talk you through getting things set up if you have questions. How do you generate such a narrow DNA size peak um, at 25 KB? So yeah, so basically we, we recommend doing size selection. Um, so we've done that with a couple of different systems. Um, and we can have um, an FAS follow up with you in terms of what makes the most sense for your particular lab. Um, but yeah, definitely it's really important to do a size selection step so that that way you avoid sequencing smaller fragments, which is the main risk, right? So that's, you wanna make sure that you're selecting for somewhat larger sizes for these hi-fi libraries. What's the best approach to use both CLR and hi-fi data together, I presume? Um, so right now we don't recommend doing hybrid assembly. As I mentioned, um, when you're doing the assembly attempt, you definitely don't want to include both CLR and HiFi data together because their error rates are so wildly different. Um, so far, I think we found that you generally do the best job when you just assemble one by itself. So if I was planning a project, I probably wouldn't recommend generating both HiFi data and CLR data and trying to merge them. I, I would recommend just focusing on generating the HiFi data and getting as much of that as you can so that you get a really good hi-fi assembly. So we can definitely follow up if you've got some older data that you want to make use of, but that, that would be our recommendation for right now. Okay, if you have plenty of hi-fi data over 100 full coverage on a very heterozygous diploid plant genome, and I would like to assemble the haplotypes, what's the preferred method? Falcon, high canoe, or Nighthawk? So I would say definitely do an attempt with Falcon, but I've heard some really good things about the work being done with High Canoe and with High ASM, HiFi ASM, um, in terms of their ability to resolve polyploid plant genomes. So I, I would say to run run both, um, just to be so you can compare and make sure that you're getting the very best assembly. And plus, uh, like High Canoe and HiFi ASM are going to finish so quickly, it really won't be that burdensome to run those in addition to running the Falcon run. Any other questions at this point? Yeah, um, so so there's a comment coming in about Nighthawk. It's, it's true, Nighthawk is not yet available. Um, it should be available pr soon, um, but once it is, we'll send a notice out to customers letting them know when it's available. Okay, another question. Is there a smallish demo data set available that they can set up and test while they're waiting for their HiFi data to be generated? So as I mentioned during the presentation, um, we've produced a number of different data sets um, in a variety of different species, everything from you know, rice and fly to human. Um, and a lot of these are available either through our DevNet or from other links um, throughout the presentation. So I think you can probably pick something, um, maybe rice would be a good example um, to download and test yourself because it shouldn't be that large. And then you can get a feel for how the tools work. So I'd probably recommend that. Okay, I think the, the questions are slowing down. Oh wait, no, there's one more. Um, what's the minimum average sequence pass for a hi-fi read? 
So it really depends on the data set. So I showed that example earlier where the average accuracy of the HiFi data generated on that 15 KB human library was um, QV34. So I would say that that's pretty typical, but it's gonna vary depending on your sequencing performance. So again, I would just make sure that you're doing as good a job as you can on that side, and you should be able to generate very highly accurate HiFi data sets. Okay, so I'm getting um, a lot of library prep questions. So we're definitely gonna take note of those and follow up with FAS um, so that they can talk you through the considerations when you're doing the library prep, because they're, they're all really good questions, but um, my background is bioinformatics, so I'm probably not the best person to answer them. So we'll definitely follow up on all of these questions. Um, so just wait for us to send you an email about those. Okay, yeah, so, th so there's a comment about using Falcon Unzip, and um, if it's not necessary, why do we talk about it? Um, so basically, um, I would say that PBAssembly is still a little bit of a developer's repository, so it has a lot of information about a lot of different tools. Um, so we haven't deprecated Falcon Unzip. What we found is that it's just not necessary in a lot of cases, and that you do a really good job with just the first Falcon attempt. So definitely like I, I think we can we'll continue to update the readme as we go and make things clear as we come out with new things um but you're right there's still information about falcon and zip in that repository okay i think that's it in terms of questions thank you so much for your time this has been really a, a real pleasure um i hope it's been helpful for you um, please leave us feedback if there's something that you want to hear more about um, or again about the, the topics for next time because we definitely want to continue this series and make it as useful to you as possible. So thank you so much and have a good day.